So the aim of this uh, presentation is to give people an overview of transition um, at Mark Rutherford, but particularly in terms of uh, students with SEND. So I'm going to go through some information, um, starting with our vision and our ethos of the school um, and give an overview of SEND and Mark Rutherford and how we identify SEND um, and talk about our graduated approach and the interventions and provision we offer uh, and the staffing that's involved with that. And then specifically about transition and key points um, throughout the next term, really and into September in the new school year and how we communicate with parents. And the last slide is about some further information and guidance. So at Mark Rutherford, we believe that every child is unique and we aim to provide a broad, balanced, personalised experience that will enable all students to be healthy, stay safe, enjoy and achieve and make a positive contribution uh, and to achieve economic well-being. Um, something we're really clear about with all of our staff is that every teacher at Mark Rutherford School is a teacher of those with SEND uh, and it's a real focus for us and it's something that we are continually striving to improve as well. And we've done a lot of work over the last year, 18 months as well, to ensure that that's, that's happening consistently. So some key information about Mark Rutherford. Um, in terms of facilities, we're really lucky. We have specialist areas and buildings and rooms, so science labs, DT workshops, food technology rooms. Um, and we also have a drama and a dance studio as well. Uh, we're the only school that has a planetarium and some schools, some primary schools have had that planetarium at their school as well. We also have a specialist autism provision, which I won't talk about in a huge amount of detail now because it's Although it's on our school site, it is run essentially in terms of spaces and allocations by the SEND team of Bedford Borough. But just so that people are aware, um, it caters for years 7 to 13. Uh, it's managed by Amber Williams and I line manage that provision. We have two specialist education uh, needs teachers um, and it's a play it's a it's a space that has spaces for 22 students. Um, all of those students have to have an EHCP and that EHCP has to clearly identify autism as that student's primary need. Currently on roll, we have about 1300 students with approximately 150 in our sixth form. Um, and we are split into tutor groups. We've moved from vertical tutoring back to tutor groups in year groups. So we have eight tutor groups with a head of year and an assistant head of year. And most tutor groups are between 25 and 30 students. Just an overview in terms of figures um, and SEND figures. So our SEND register at the moment is 263 students. We have 43 EHCPs across the school, including our autism provision. 136 students as Ken, so as K, so school support. Um, and at the moment, 84 is L, which for us is monitoring. So I'll talk about that in a bit more detail when we look at our graduated approach. Uh, our highest area of need at the moment is cognition and learning. Uh, followed by social, emotional, mental health. In terms of identifying SEN at Mark Rutherford, um, our aim is to identify that as early as possible. Um, and the way that we go about that really is through teacher assessment and observations, um, including mock exams, but also in in class assessments and just through marking work in general. And those conversations happen regularly with the SEN team. Um, we also I, I feel we're really lucky because one of our members of staff is trained as a lead, uh, as an assessor um, for access arrangements, but she can also complete screeners um, and that's her that's her role. That's her dedicated role. So um, we are able to utilize those skills. Uh, we can complete referrals and recommendations or we can take on board those recommendations from external agencies. So speech and language therapy, uh, the autism advisory team. Um, and through discussions with parents and carers. Uh, one of the things we have worked on now that works really well is that we have an electronic referral system in school. So it's a, it's a form that teachers complete um, and that's a way that we can keep everything quite centralised and we can review information that we receive from teachers. One of the really important things is how we share information with staff. Um, we're a large school and we have um, over 100 teachers. So ensuring that information is shared consistently is key for us. One of the ways that we do that is for a student's pupil passport. In other schools, they might be called IEPs or one page profiles, um, but it's an electronic document that we share with teachers um, and 
as parents of students of the school, you'd have access to class charts where you can see your son or daughter's timetable um, and their reward points or perhaps their negative points. Um, but in school, that system is used mainly for teachers with their seating plans. And on that seating plan, it will have lots of student information. And one of those pieces of information will be whether that student is send. And from there, they'll be able to open that pupil passport. Um, and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, information is also shared by email. We have weekly staff bulletins, which has a dedicated section about send on there, so we can update that. And then through single conversations, uh, we found that even though all of this works really well, I think one of the best things is having conversations face to face with members of staff. So pupil passport, this is just an example of you know, an anonymized pupil passport and to give you an idea of the information that's shared. Uh, so key to this is the main areas of send need and inf other important information. There's a section about key strategies to support students. So that is where as a send team, we would write specific strategies for that student and what we would expect teachers to do in lessons to support that student. Uh, we can also include key data, um, so things like CAT scores, but also current reading ages. So that helps teachers in their planning to ensure that um, work is pitched at the correct level for a student. One of the things that I feel is really important is to make sure that student voice is included in this as well. So there is a section on what's important to the student and what are their aspirations for the future, um, but also what they feel they can do well, but what they feel they need help with, because sometimes there is perhaps a disconnect between those those things and sometimes that's missing, we found. So there is a lot of information here and I won't go through the actual uh, diagram, but the graduated approach at Mark Rutherford, which is similar to every school really, um, would start for us with quality first teaching. Um, and the SEM code of practice is really clear about the fact that most students' needs can be met in a classroom with free quality first teaching. So using our knowledge of students and their needs, teachers would prepare lessons and deliver lessons that are high quality that cater for those needs and for those students. If there are concerns, uh, those teaching strategies would be re reviewed and adjustments can be made and then we would monitor and record these strategies uh, to look at their impact. So that's really the first cycle of our graduated approach. And this information is always shared with, with me and our assistant SENCOs. To continue monitoring uh, is really important. So concerns and strategies are then shared with teaching staff by the SENCO um, and the student is monitored or referred for further assessments. Um, and like I said previously, that's where I feel we're really lucky because we have a member of staff that has that as their dedicated role. Um, and then we're really looking at the SEN register. So using the information gathered, I would then determine whether a student is placed on the SEN register and what further assessments might be needed and what else we might need to do. Um, parents would always be informed if their son or daughter is being added to our SEND register. Um, and when students start in September, if they're on the SEND register at their primary school, I would still send a letter home to parents to inform them just so that you've got that, um, that document that says that. So in terms of interventions and provisions, there's, there's, a, there's a lot that we can offer and there's lots that we offer when the when needs change as well uh, on our school website we have a document a school send offer that's specific to Mark Rutherford that parents can go and look at but some of our interventions include things like Lexia and Switch On which most people have heard of we have a really successful paired reading program which involves our sixth form students um, and we know that successful transition including older students in the school is one of those things that works really well so that's something that we look at doing Numerous interventions, um, which is small group work or one to one sessions. We have social skills groups running in every year group uh, up to year 12. In fact, um, one to one interventions support. And we also have things like after school math support. As a school, I'm always really clear to to parents that we are we needs led, not diagnosis led. So we don't need diagnosis of uh, dyslexia or dyscalculia to put strategies in place you know we can complete screeners and i'm clear that that is not a diagnosis we can screen for those things and if we feel that that's a need um, we can put things in place um, our lead assessor could complete things like snap screening and lucid assessments reading age assessments cat scores um, 
and some students arrive without data. So one of the things that we would do is um, try to complete that and fill in any gaps when a student um, comes to Mark Rutherford. In terms of access arrangements, because I get a question from in year seven, I get parents asking about things like exams and extra time and rest breaks, and that's something that we will look at. But as a school, that's a focus for year nine for us to have those formalised, uh, because if we do the um, access arrangement assessment too soon, it only lasts for a certain amount of time and we'd have to reassess the student before they actually get to their exams in years 10 and 11. Having said that, if we feel there's a need there, so maybe the use of a laptop or extra time, we would still try to put that in place as early as possible because it should be the student's normal way of working. Um, and if that's helping, then that helps to go towards an assessment to show that that needs to be in place. So I've already spoken about staffing. I think what, as well as having a lead assessor that can complete assessments, we're also really lucky that we have two assistant SENCOs and we split our, our school or our school body into, into key stages. So um, Eve Proctor works mainly with years seven, eight and nine, so is involved if, with transition from primary school to secondary school. Um, and as the students move up to school, up the school, Mrs. Paler uh, is then in charge of sort of year 10 and 11 and preparing for adulthood. Um, so transition into school and out of school um, is, is looked after by specific people. We have a SEND teacher as well. Learning support is managed by Mrs Jones, um, who works in learning support all the time, um, and she has an overview of the students that are there, what they're doing, um, collecting work from teachers, supporting students when they're there. Mrs Eves works in learning support most of the time, but is also a math specialist, so she also runs specific maths interventions, including after school, uh, and we also have a really well qualified school counsellor as well. Just a little bit of information about staff training and CPD. So our CPD calendar is regularly reviewed as well. So we have complete audits of staff, um, teaching staff and support staff, in fact, um, and then through appraisal cycles as well, we can see where there might be gaps in some people's knowledge or perhaps a confidence boost is needed. So we can then signpost staff to specific CPD and we um, use National College for a lot of that as well. So there's there is training on pretty much every area of SEND that you can think of. Um, we've also used specific courses from the University of Derby, University of Wolverhampton, and then we've had specific training from the National Autistic Society and also um, the Autism Education Trust as well. Um, so we have we've received a lot of training over the last, I would say, 18 months as well. So in terms of transition, our approach really is informed by the Education Endowment Fund Foundation. Sorry. Um, so really, there are four areas. They they say there are three, but in for us, we split them into four. So the reason why perhaps transition isn't successful um, one of the reasons is the continuity of curriculum and identifying gaps. So lots of students might arrive with some gaps in the curriculum. And what we would do to ensure that doesn't happen is to communicate with our feeder schools so that we know what students are learning and then what we can do to ensure that there aren't gaps. Develop a curriculum which promotes natural progression. So we work with a lot, a lot of our feeder schools to ensure that there is that natural progression in the curriculum. And then again for our assessments and screening. Another area or a challenge is adapting to the new academic challenge of secondary school. For many of our students, it's a huge, it's a huge jump um, and really working independently um, and completing homework and independent study is, is really quite difficult for some students. So we make sure that support is available so students can stay after school um, at lunchtime. The use of teaching assistance in lessons to support that is key as well new routines and expectations for so many of our students and students on the spectrum as well. It's quite hard to adapt to something that is completely new. Um, so that's why school visits and tours are important for us. And some students will have more than one tour of the school. Some students have had tours of the school already with their families. There's information booklets and there's website information, particularly on our school website uh, and communication with parents and carers. Those meetings have already happened with lots of parents and carers and they continue to happen. Another area supporting healthy P 
peer networks. And I mentioned that when I spoke about the sixth form being involved in some interventions as well. So buddy systems and groupings, we will take into account where we can friendship groups to support that. Um, but also there's work that's carried out in our PSHE curriculum, um, which looks at healthy relationships with friends and how it's important that when you, you know, you join a new school, you know, you will develop new friendships um, and that's that's a positive thing. So in terms of the stages of SEND transition, so the first thing is really about gathering information and that is happening now. Uh, for the most part, it's happened and I've had meetings with some SENCOs already and I've got some still to, to have. We would collect as much information from primary schools as possible so that we are fully prepared as well. Um, and we will have meetings with families as well. I, we don't want SEND to be something that just happens between schools. We want parents to be involved in that as well. And if a student has an, an EHCP, if I can attend that annual review, that's really useful as well. If a student perhaps is in the process um, or schools are applying for an EHCP, a co-production meeting or attending a co-production meeting is really useful as well if I'm invited to it. Uh, in the summer term, so where we are now, uh, even myself, assistant SENCOs will visit primary schools and we'll introduce new students to learning support and identify some potential working relationships because we know that some students need that um, and that will happen in those extra visits. Um, also in those visits we'll do things like team building exercises, getting to know you exercises um, and then there'll be support from the pastoral team, so the head of year and the assistant head of year and our family support worker as well. The whole school transition day um, which will happen in July um, is for all students um, but one thing that we do on that day is ensure that our TAs are involved in that so that if there is information that perhaps we haven't received, TAs are observing students in lessons, getting to know students um, and they can then feed back to us and we can then perhaps contact the primary school and ask some questions um, and it's about for us being prepared. And then when we get to September, it's really about me ensuring that teachers are prepared um, and I share that information with teachers. Um, pupils EHCPs um, are shared um, and pupil passports are created and they're shared via class charts um, so the teachers can start to look through their class list, ensure they know the students um, and they understand those students needs and what they need to be doing to support them. Um, and we will then finalise as well a timetable of TA support um, to ensure that students are as well supported as possible in lessons. Really from that point onwards there are some things that could, that could occur so we might feel that there are students that might have a special educational need and we weren't aware so it might be that I go back to primary schools and ask questions. Um, we can then uh, seek advice from support, you know, support from autism advisory team, external agencies, um, but it's all for us. It's about continuing to monitor progress of those students. For me, one of the key things is about working collaboratively with parents, um, and I am always happy to have emails from parents, phone calls with parents, have meetings with parents to ensure that we are both on the same page and we know what's going on. Um, I wouldn't like to have meetings and then uh, find out that parents aren't happy with what's happening. So I'd much rather have those conversations early as well. Um, so we have a send email address um, that parents can um, use to contact us um, and we will usually respond within a day, a couple of days as well. Um, and really the last slide is about some further information on our school website, which is really clear there is a transition page um, and there's lots of information there about what will happen. Um, and I think what's really important is having a look at our send page so that parents are familiar with our send policy, our send offer. There is also a parent carer handbook um, which goes through information about transition. Um, and one last link is at Bedford Borough local offer, which I think is really important that parents are aware of that and they know how to um, find some further information as well. And that is the end of the presentation.